and we're back for another quarantine deck profile. Today we're going to get out those sporty boys, the ultra athletes. <sighs> <laughs> ah! Ultra Athletes have long been one of my favorite decks, even though it's also one of my favorite decks to dump on, because they suffer a similar problem that Toons do, and that's, uh, did I open my field spell and something I can summon? But with UAs, the problem was, uh, there was only one monster that was level 4. <laughs> However, the newly revealed OCG support for the deck, which is really, really late to the table, gave us another level 4 and a level 8 to round out the entire deck. Now we got two of each level. It's, it's like poetry. It, it, it rhymes. Is the deck busted? Eh, it's not bad, actually. It definitely is one of those TCG decks that got the OCG upgrade treatment, where like, and then, oh wow, it went from crappy to a functional engine. Go figure. But anyway, let's get into the deck profile and I'll uh, see what you guys think. All right guys, here is the deck profile. Instead of going card by card like I tend to do on these EDO pro deck profile jobs, I figured I would kind of go over how UAs work and why the new cards are just the best thing in the world. Back when this deck first came out, which I believe was Duelist Alliance alongside Burning Abyss, it was the inferior TCG exclusive archetype because it centered around two cards, specifically UA Midfielder and UA Stadium. Midfielder didn't even come out in the first set. Basically, the deck heavily relies on its normal summon. UA Midfielder was the only level 4 monster that we ever got in the few waves of support the deck saw, which meant that by the end of the support, the deck had a hard time getting started because it only had one normal summonable monster in the entire deck, which meant if you didn't see that or you see Rhoda, you were crap out of luck. The other card it heavily centers around is its field spell UA Stadium. When a UA monster is normal summoned, you add a UA monster from your deck to your hand. Ha, huh, see, look, it's even, you need a normal summon to get your plays going and you need a normal summon to get your plays going. Oh boy. Can you see the see the two card linchpin that the deck is really, really, really heavy centered around? This deck loses to MST. Feels bad, man. However, besides that one weakness, the deck does have some really cool strengths that really made me enjoy playing it, even though it could brick because of it. The fun mechanic with the UAs are they're basically a bunch of sports players and they have an offensive and defensive lineup. On your main phase one, you play things like your main deck Armadi's UA Mighty Slugger, or your piercing damage also popping a card when it does battle damage UA Dreadnought Dunker, in order to do some serious damage during the battle phase. And then in your main phase, you can swap them for your UA Perfect Ace and your UA Blockbacker, your defense team to play during your opponent's turn. I just love that. You have an offense and a defense. It's sports. And every UA has a inherent special summoning condition where you can return one on the field to special summon the one in the hand, which is how you do your hot swap. UA Midfielder actually has a quick play effect which allows you to force a swap, which led you to do some funny wombo combos like spinning your perfect dace and things like that to get it back on board so that you could like with your rival rebounder you could like two negates off of its effect or something, I don't know, there's some fun stuff you could do with it. But overall, that was why the deck was so fun. Not only does the deck have a bunch of cool, diverse effects in its main deck, it also has probably one of the best equipped spells in the game, UA Power Jersey. This single card wins you more games than any other card in the deck. Basically, it gives your UAs a thousand attack and defense, lets them attack twice if the first one destroyed a monster, and any battle damage done by those attacks is doubled. Your UA Dreadnought Dunker, which gets a 500 attack boost due to the field spell when your UAs are special summoned, and that is a permanent attack boost, by the way. Way. Plus, the thousand puts him at a mean 4,000 attack power. And if you happen to attack into something with like zero defense, because you know there are lots of monsters with very, very low defense power, you are swinging for double piercing 8,000 damage. Not only that, the deck also has a very, very neat quick play spell, which if you have two or more UA monsters on the field, you shuffle all monsters on the field into the deck, and then each player special summons monsters from their main deck up to the number of monsters you shuffled into your main decks, which meant if you shuffled a bunch of extra deck monsters, your opponent gets nothing. It's a giant non-targeting, non-destruction removal quick play spell. It's fantastic. However, because the deck so wholly required its normal summon to stick, it had a hard time getting two monsters on the board reliably, which meant the card almost never saw play in the deck because it was just hard to get two on board. Last but not least, the original cards are our UA penalty box, which is a continuous trap card, which acts as a battle trap. It 
banishes any monster a UA battles for two turns. It's actually kind of nice. It gets uh, problem cards off the field, doesn't target, you know, feels good. But its main function was discard fodder for your UA perfect days because in the graveyard you can banish it to search a UA spell card, which meant you're probably searching your field spell. Your other option would be your normal spell UA signing deal, which negates the effects of the monster it summons, but it just summons for some life points any one of your UA monsters from the deck. It's it's stupid. I know tons of decks that would love a normal spell that just summons one out of the deck. Sure, you can't use them for synchros or exceeds, but you can use them for links. So you had tons of really, really good bones here, but if your opponent MSTs your field spell, it all kind of falls apart. Which is why we got all the cool stuff now. The first new card added was our UA Libero Spiker, another level 4 monster. Oh. Thank God, we have something we can normal summon. This could have been a level 4 reptile vanilla monster, but as long as it was a UA, it would fulfill the summoning condition of the rest of them. But no, they were kind enough to make it a high attack power, 1800 attack defense warrior level 4. Nice, it fits in the deck. Not only does he have his normal inherent special summoning ability, he also has this ridiculous quick play effect during your opponent's main phase to shuffle one level 5 or higher UA monster from your hand into your deck, and then if you do, special summon one UA monster with a different name from your deck, and then you return this card to the hand. Oh man, he's uh, both kind of an offensive card due to his attack power and the fact that you normal summon him in attack mode, but he's also kind of defensive, playing a similar role to your UA midfielder, letting you special summon any one of your UAs on your opponent's turn. And like I said, they have tons of diverse effects, so I'm sure you can come up with something fun, but his best target is also his new buddy, UA playing manager. Oh man, this is the only UA that doesn't have that inherent summoning condition his is actually a little bit different. When you normal or special summon any other UA monster, you can special summon this card from your hand along with it. Kind of like Kage to Kage. If this card is special summoned, you can activate one of his effects. Target one card in the field, destroy it. Nice. So I can use my UA Spiker here to summon him during my opponent's turn, right from the deck, mind you to get a pop, like a morale tech. That's fun. <laughs> or his second effect. Negate the effects of all face-up monsters on the field until the end of the turn except UA monsters. Oh, what? Holy crap, he's an Omni to gate. At 2600 defense, he's a little bit hard to kill, and he will get an attack boost from your UA stadium, so that's kind of fun. Yeah, this thing and this thing are stupid. But that's not the only new card we got. We also got another field spell, UA Hyper Stadium, which solves the other problem of the deck. I need more field spells. It's also considered an FA card, which is kind of neat. Uh, it works in both decks. However, I, I think it decidedly works better in this deck. When this card is activated, you can add one UA or FA monster from your deck or one UA Stadium from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, sweet. So it allows you to recover a mst UA Stadium. <laughs> nice. And it's also a rota for all the monsters in the deck. Sweet. Thank God. That's what the deck needed. It just needed a rota that wasn't restricted to level four or lower. But that's not all it does. Oh no. It's also a double summon. By revealing a field spell in my hand and paying a thousand life points, this turn I get the normal summon a UA or FA monster in addition to my normal summoner set. This applies only once per turn and it, it continues to apply even if this leaves the field. Holy shit! It gives me a second normal summon. And if you go over here, UA Stadium does not say that it's a hard once per turn for that search. So getting a double summon effect means that you can search twice. Holy shite. This actually functions. Whoa. The only other weird card in the deck is this OCG uh, Flame Noble Knight Renard. He's, uh, he's in here solely for one of our three is old two tails of the Noble Knights because um, by using her effect on summon, you can add your playing manager to your hand and then you can dump your UA power jersey to the grave to summon Renaud in defense mode. Renaud then adds that power jersey to your hand so that you can just OTK. Basically, he's, you know, just, he's basically just a way to search your equip spell anytime you need it. Other than that, that's just basically the way the deck works. All this weird ratios for my links are really just to so that if I use Pot of Extravagance, I don't lose one of these things that I might actually need. And then, I don't know, these are just some choice level fours because you could technically make a, a rank four play if you really wanted to, but pff, I don't know, you'll never do that. And plus you got permits for some hand traps in your Foolish Bear Goods to dump a copy copy of your penalty box if you don't want to use its field effect, you just want to use it to search your UA Stadium. I will say this though, I've probably set this card and popped it with UA playing 
managers of first effect more than I'd like to admit in order to search my field spell. It's a really weird one. And you might want to play three of these. It's just that, like, you want kind of three of these and kind of three of these, but because you have so many different monsters in the deck, you run into this issue where you just start running out of space. So feel free to play with these ratios, but I do believe this is a good place to start. All right, that was the deck profile. Let's have these guys hit the field and show us what they're made of. All right, this first duel here is against Shiranui. I know it's not the most meta thing in the world, but it does show off some of the wombo combos, at least well enough to show you what the deck can do given all the new cards. Here I am doing that aforementioned popping my own UA penalty box with manager's effect, which seems really clumsy, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do to get your combo pieces on board. And my board that I ended up making wasn't too bad. Now, he's apparently playing Shiranui is completely wrong. I, I, I didn't know they were a normal summon one monster set a bunch in pass, but you know what? Let's just negate that, get that off the board, start popping that backer with Manager's Effect. It's almost like it's really good. You can just kind of loop a morale tech anytime you want. <laughs> it's like the deck functions or something. Nice. I didn't need the Rota, but yeah, well, that's, that's fine. We, we, can just, we can just have some fun now. Let's just have fun. Let's just have fun. It's fun. It's sports. It's a sporting event, everybody. Just keep popping his back row, you know, it's cool. Everyone's having a good time here. All right, so I uh, go for the Donker and I search out my field spell with Azul, or field spell, equip spell. So that way I can, you know, just win the game because uh, he suffered long enough, I think. I don't get the second attack, sadly, because he doesn't have any monsters, but I, uh, it's fine, I have game on board. Punch you. If I sound a bit flustered, this is like the millionth time I recorded these because I reset Windows yesterday and all my settings were screwed up. So every time I record this, I find something else wrong with the recording. Like, oh, it recorded with my webcam microphone. It sounds like booty. Oh, it recorded in a weird format the Premiere doesn't understand. Nice. Uh, anyway, here's Cleese. Oh, hey, look, I actually get to use Penalty Box's battle effect. That's something that doesn't come up too much, but it is a solid way of removing a monster because it's a non-targeting banish. And here I am misplaying with my poor technical play by uh, using Manager to pop Scout after it searched, not on activation like I should have done. I guess I was like, oh, I want him to pay the life points, but I guess he still gets the card, so that's, you know, that's kind of lousy. But, you know, that's that's fine. We can still win and play through the, uh, the lose one turn by just putting a bunch of damage on board and making sure that he doesn't really have much of a play on his next turn. So he plays the scale, negate the scale. Whoa, oh, there we go, we won. That was a nostalgic duel though. This was actually a duel we would, a matchup we would have seen back in the day. Last up is Moefex. Oh, I don't know why anyone would play this, but hey, you know what? It's another one of those, it shows off what you can do with a less than stellar opening hand. Before, it would just be like, well, I guess I lost, but now it's like, hey, I can at least do something. I can mount an offense. As opposed to scooping and going to game two. Ah, what a refreshing feeling this is. Obviously, one negate's not the most formidable, formidable defense, but hey, you know what? It it at least got rid of the Regeki. That's the important thing. All right, so I, sw I hot swap for my another negate, which I probably should have used on this rainbow dragon. I kind of was hoping you wouldn't read it and you would go into a synchro summon and I would put that in defense mode. But, you know, I should have put it in defense mode, because then it would have had zero defense, and I could have just OTK'd with Dunker Jersey, but, you know, it's okay. I'm Captain Technical Play. Instead, I do this really weird, wonky wombo combo just to put a bunch of damage on board, which I, you know, could have done to one, but nah, that's not how Dave plays. Dave plays the wrong way. But I still managed to clear his board and leave him with like no light points and he quits because I'm assuming that he just didn't think he could top deck in anything. All right, that was the deck and the replays that I gathered that I felt really showed off what the deck could do. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'm really looking forward to when these cards come out. I am super excited. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think and I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblin Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. What's up, douchebags? By the power of this heel of all my calculos, I command you to subscribe to the channel.
Grab your deck and be sure to click one of these other videos by David A. Tell 1212. It's the best damn channel on the internet. Yeah, man. Yeah.